Bullying is actually a very specific type of aggression. It is the deliberate abuse of power to cause harm to another person. Three components, deliberate, abuse of power, and to cause harm. That means it's not a fight between two equally measured friends. It isn't an accidental slip. And it has a harm that can be caused that may be physical, it may be emotional, or it may be social. Welcome back to another series of The Jews Next Door as we begin our next topic, our topic of child safety. After we're finishing talking about building a relationship with one's child, we are now ready to talk about the, the next rung on our, you know, our parenting hierarchy of needs, which is child safety. It's impossible for us to think about getting to so many of our other topics without first and foremost addressing the very important topic of child safety. And we're going to talk about, you know, bullying. We're going to talk about technology, substance abuse, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, all of these different things, child abuse, really across the gamut. We're going to talk about it all. And in this first episode of this, of this topic, we're going to be talking with Dr. Rononovic all about bullying, every aspect, really anything under the sun about bullying. We really covered it all. And it's an extensive episode. I know generally we do the basics in the first week, the practical in the second week, and the intervention in the third week. But being that this topic is just so jam-packed and we have to cover so much important topics, each episode itself will be covering both the basics, practical, and the intervention with Dr. Rononovic, who is the go-to expert on bullying. She has her PhD in it. She really has, has done incredible work in this field. And I know that I gained so much from this episode. So make sure to, to really listen to each and every single episode, the entire episode. There's so much incredible information, vital information in these episodes. Without further ado, enjoy this episode of Parenting the Jews Next Door. Let's parent the Jews Next Door together. Welcome back to another episode of The Jews Next Door. This week, we have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Dr. Rona Novik. Dr. Novik is the Dean of Azraeli, and when she worked at North Shore, Long Island's Medical Jewish Center, she developed the Alliance for School Mental Health, and she authored the BRAVE, B-R-A-V-E, Bully Program and uh, for schools, and she's recognized for expertise in behavior management, child behavior therapy, and, and bullying. She's the go-to person for bullying, and, and as we go into this episode of you know, child safety, specifically in bullying, really thank you so much, really the leader, one of the leaders of our door, of our generation, and uh, really such a pleasure to speak to you about raising the Jews next door. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So let's just dive right in. What is, what's your definition of, of bullying? Well, it's not my definition. Or what is it's the, the definition? The, the, de- <laughs> the definition, uh, and it's really an important question because it's such a popular word, and parents and educators bandy it about, as do children. You know, right. someone didn't share their snack, they're bullying me. Right, but right. bullying is actually a very specific type of aggression. It is the deliberate abuse of power to cause harm to another person. Three components, okay. deliberate, abuse of power, and to cause harm. That means it's not a fight between two equally measured friends. It isn't an accidental slip. Mm-hmm. And it has a harm that can be caused that may be physical, it may be emotional, or it may be social. Interesting. So that means that bullying doesn't exist between two friends, you're saying? Or it could, but... It, it could if, for example, I'm the wealthier friend uh-huh, and uh-huh. I'm making fun of or teasing you because you can't go the same places that I do on vacation. It. Now it's power. In one of the things I talked to talk about in schools with students is power is fluid. If you are doing the spelling bee and you're the best speller, you're powerful at that moment. Interesting. Being the best speller doesn't give you power on the basketball court. Uh So And then on the basketball court, there's power, right? Correct. So So at times we all have Mm -hmm. power. How we use it is what's important. Gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. I understand. So are there, are there different, what are there different types of bullying? The types of bullying are defined by the types of harm they cause. So physical okay. bullying causes physical harm. Emotional bullying is typically teasing, name calling, verbal abuse, and social bullying, which is the type that teachers and parents recognize the least as bullying. It's social exclusion. I made a club and you can't be in it. Mm. We're playing with teams, but no one's picking you. You can't play. It's limiting someone's social Mm -hmm. access. 
Um, in our communities, social bullying is particularly toxic because unlike the general population, we don't have a full array of Girl Scout troops or Little League teams right, that not. we can join. Right, right. That's and true. in our smaller communities, if you are not included in the group, there isn't another group to right. belong to. These may be the only five girls on my grade level that live in my community. Right, right. If I'm out with them, where do I go right. for my social outlet? Right, the right. last type of bullying is cyberbullying. Mm. And that is bullying with any electronic device. It could be through a multiplayer game on your computer. It could be through your phone. It could be in online uh, messaging. Got it. Are you, or would you say that that's like the most prevalent trend in our society in term, or like, or it's just, or that's not the only, no. What's interesting is that a good amount of research suggests that if someone is bullying online, it's very likely they're bullying in person as well. Really? Wow. There are very few people who engage in persistent bullying only online. Interesting. If they're, and even like online predators, like that type of concept? Again, we're not talking about online predators right, here. We're talking not, about, we're not talking like about online you know, bullies. Like that's not like a concept you're saying. No. I mean, so I, I do think that this generation has a very poor understanding of technology and its impact. Yeah. They may know how to swipe faster than we do. <laughs> and then we that may think true. we old folks <laughs> need them to set up our cell phones, et cetera. But they don't really have wisdom about the impact of technology. Mm -hmm. And so they don't realize that, for example, if I have a picture of you on my phone and I send it to someone else, they can manipulate that picture. Right. Now they can change that image and do something um, unfriendly right. with it and send it on. They don't have a sense of the permanence of the internet, Yes, that anything yeah. that they put out in social media is there for others to take and co-opt and it's there forever. Right. And they don't have the sense of impact right, right. that the things that they say without, you know, I think the current thinking is about 85% of human communication is not in our words. Wow. It's in our tone and our body language. Hmm. That's all lost yeah, that's, on the, wow. when we co communicate electronically. So when you say on your, you know, your social media or you respond to someone and say, yeah, dude, is that. Yeah, dude. Right. Or is that yeah, dude? Yeah, so much gets we lost. We can't tell over if the, it's sarcastic or right. if it's supportive. So um, there are risks communicating that way that you may come across as right. if you're being hurtful. Right, 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 right. Wow, wow. So what would you say? Yeah, what is like these different types of bullying that we're discussing? What do each of them look like? Like, like I so guess physical bullying is hitting, kicking, pushing, right. shoving, and you know it's interesting. I've been doing work in bully prevention over two decades now. Wow. And when I started, physical bullying was almost exclusively boys. But ladies, we've come a long way. Yeah. And we're seeing more physical aggression Why, in what do you, what girls. What do you attribute that to? I think our culture is just um, blurred gender lines. Equality, and right. the same is true of social bullying. Social bullying used to be exclusively the, the purview right. of girls. Right. Right. Girls right. made clubs, girls made cliques. Guess what? Guys are doing it now. Yeah. They often no, do it in, in the context of the sports. Yep, exactly. I see it um, You know, who can be on my team, who can play. Mm -hmm. You may be on my team, but I'm never going to pass the ball to you. Right. So uh, guys are doing that as well. So that's, that's social bullying. And emotional bullying is the name calling and the teasing, you know, your mother wears army boots kind of stuff. Right, right. Um, that has been around as long as man. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, in our Jewish community, we think of as all of the issues of Lashon Hara and how we speak of each other. Sure. Um, that can comprise that kind of bullying. Right, right. And then technological bullying, like what is that? I mean, I feel like that's so like- So again, it's, it's everything from using your email to send rumors about someone to mm -hmm. everyone in the class. And that's the other thing about, I always say that cyberbullying is bullying on steroids. Right. Because when you so bully one person, you know, right. okay, it's, it's in that moment and it's done. Right. When I do it online, it's permanent and it can go to thousands of yeah. people in a matter of moments. Right. So the, the challenge with cyberbullying is that when bullying had no technological piece to it, a child who was victimized could go home at the end of the school day mm. and feel, I'm now in my safe haven. Right, right. Now, now I can't be not. touched. Mm. Now, 24-7, it's, yeah, it's, it's popping up, it's dinging on their phone. Wow. They go to check their homework 
and many schools, rightfully so, are using technology appropriately right. for homework and for learning. But those tools can also be there. co-opted right. for You're still on your computer somebody doing writing, some homework you, someone... you know, idiot, moron, et right. cetera, and putting you down um, in a way that your entire class and all your classmates see it. Right, right. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, boy. So uh, what, what cues would you say that can parents use to, to pick up on the fact that maybe their child is being bullied? So, you know, one of the things that I will never forget, Robert Brooks was giving grand rounds when I was uh, at LIJ. He's the expert on children's self-esteem, building self-esteem. And he asked a question that changed the way I parented. He asked, what's the first question you ask your children when they come off the bus? What's the first well, thing I mean, you I ask them when they come to the I know a lot of people ask, your day? How's your day? Right. As a working mom, I asked, do you have homework? Right. Well, you know, let's get, get down to business. And I realized that what that communicated was that's what I was interested in, was right. the academics. I think that as parents, we have to become a part of our children's social world. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask questions. Who did you play with today? Who did you share with? Who did you help with questions? Who was nice in school? Who was not nice in school? Who played with whom? Who got along with whom? Uh, who's participating in which activities we have to ask those questions it's funny because every day when my son comes like I, i'll ask him these types of questions and he's like why do you always want to know who i play with i'm like i'm just gonna, yeah, i want to talk i want to so that's curious. that's the difference between <laughs> boys and girls if you ask your daughters they'll say well this one talked to this one and then she talked to that one and then she said to who if you ask your boys it's like they're in the cia right like you get one word answers exactly. and, and absolutely need to know basis if you're lucky you get a grunt yeah. you know who'd you play with guys what'd you do stuff right, you know right, no right. <laughs> Um, but you have to you have to pry and and keep digging until you figure out a little bit of what's going on socially. Right. In terms of a child who's victimized, look for signs of distress. Mm -hmm. What look would that look like? Look for sleep disorders. Okay. Look for regressive behavior. Um, a child who wasn't thumb sucking is now thumb sucking. A child who wasn't having nightmares is now having nightmares. And the big one is look for school refusal. I don't want to go to school. Right. Now. A child who doesn't want to go to school on the day of a big test, we understand. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. when it's a field trip and a child doesn't want to go to school, then I'm highly suspicious. Right. When it's a social event, when it's a Shabbaton, when it's a, uh, you know, field day, a party at school and your child doesn't want to go, that's a red flag. Yeah. Um, the, I would say those are the big signs and a, and a child getting more socially withdrawn, mm -hmm. not wanting to go out with friends, not wanting to go places socially. Could, could appetite play into that too or not, not necessarily as much? It, you might see changes in appetite, uh -huh. yes. Got it. Wow, very interesting. And what, what could a uh, child, I mean, both a child and a parent do, I guess, to help strengthen their child or a child themselves strengthen themselves yeah. to, you know, both prevent and to defend themselves. So from it's, it's such a hard, it's such a hard question because bullies look for an emotional reaction right. and they're looking for a they're not also. gonna they're not gonna bully i i don't know that i would i actually hate calling reactive children weak right they're just made in a way that they wear their heart on their sleeve right they show their emotions i don't think that's I a weakness that that's I, lovely I, yeah, yeah that's you know <laughs> as as they would say in the old days a good nishama you yeah. know it does a nice heart a kind soul but you can see on their face that they're yeah. upset. Whereas a, a tough cookie who is not empathic, things roll off of them, is not necessarily the common target for bully. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens if you tell a child who by their nature wears their heart on their sleeve, toughen up? It works about as well as telling me to grow. <laughs> you know, my five feet tall height is not getting any better. Right. No matter how much you tell me, Rona, stand up straight. It's, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch, a smidge, <laughs> but you're not going to change me. Right. Um, over the years, what I've discovered is that these are children who have been told time and time again, don't react. Don't show them you're upset. And they can't do that. Let it slide. Let it slide. They can't do that. Right. Not only that, but guess what happens when a victim do, who's always responded with tears now doesn't respond. Do you think the bully walks away and says, oh, I guess he toughened up. No, the bully escalates. Right. The bully increases their torment because they're used they know, to getting they a reaction. They're, they're, waiting they're used for to it. getting a reaction. Right. And so if you're going to tell your shy, retiring, empathic, kind child, toughen up, don't show them you're upset. Mm -hmm. You also have to predict that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Right. And you have to be prepared for that. Over the years, I have learned quite by accident that it's a very small distinction, but don't tell your child to be tough. Tell your child to act tough. Mm. Tell them to pretend. 
tell them, I know inside you're very upset, but remember when you acted in that play and you were Abe Lincoln and you had to stand tall and straight or, you know, think about how Spider-Man acts when he has to do something difficult. They just look, they pretend that they're not scared. Can you do that for a few seconds and then get away? Right. Then go someplace private. You can be upset privately. It's a small distinction, but helping children to be different on the outside than mm-hmm. they are on the inside when a bully is attacking them or giving them a hard time can be very helpful. Right. The other thing is that they shouldn't they shouldn't be alone. Right. You decrease your chance of being a victim by 50% just by standing next to another person. Right, 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 right. Just by being with someone. Sure. And so making those um, changes is helpful. The third thing I would say is that there are some children who need some help learning social skills. Mm-hmm. They just aren't as good at picking up, how do I start a conversation? How do I join a group that's playing a game? How do I compete in a friendly and healthy way? How do I be a good loser and a good winner, not a sore loser or sore winner? Those children need help learning social skills and parents may need to find ways to teach children those social skills directly. Many children pick it up by osmosis, but some children need a little bit of help. What would you say for parents? What's like the best way that parents could help help their children with those? So sometimes parents can do it. Sometimes you need a professional, Mm -hmm. but play with your child. Play games with them when you're playing. Teach them this is how you win a game. Right. You don't say, ha ha, you're so stupid, I beat <laughs> you. That's not going to win friends. How can you win a game, be happy about it, but still be nice about it? How can, you know, when you lose the game, you don't throw the checkerboard across the room. Right. How can you lose gracefully? How do we start a conversation? Let's practice. Let's pretend you're on my talk show and I'm interviewing you. Let's practice. Just come up with different ways um, and watch your child and coach them, Right, coach them and And give them, by the way, and give them social opportunities, arrange play dates, Right, arrange them. You know, the, I think of play dates on a hierarchy, you know, a play date where two kids are going together to the movies has the lowest social demand. All they have to do is sit next to each other and watch a play date where it's Shabbat afternoon. They're going to be together for For six hours hours and there's no technology and they just have to look at each other and play all day has a very high social demand. If you have a child who's struggling, start with lower social demand play dates Mm, and build up. Such a good point. Wow. If you're looking for a great way to have some good, clean, kosher fun with your children through the powerful effect of music, Look no further because Jay Karaoke is here. Jay Karaoke gives one and all the platform to belt out their favorite tunes from a library of thousands of Jewish songs, hundreds of artists, and genres across multiple decades of incredible Jewish music. Personally, I know that I love singing. I love it. I love karaoke. But I was really never able to get into it because it wasn't the Jewish songs. And that's where Jay Karaoke comes in with their huge selection from the latest hits to the classics. They even have nursery rhymes for your little ones. And with features like key changes to help you sing, to make you more comfortable as you're singing, and speeding it up or slowing down the song, they have really thought of everything. To enjoy Jewish karaoke your way, all you need to do is head to jkaraoke.com. Choose a subscription that fits for you. And to make it even more fun, you could purchase their state-of-art karaoke kit, which gives you the feeling as if you are today's top singer. You can insert whoever you feel it is. Connect your kit to any device, like it could be a laptop, a computer, a tablet, whatever it is. And you plug in your speaker, plug in your J Karaoke microphone, and you sing away. It's as easy as that. That's all it is. And it's really fun. I checked out their website. It really looks amazing. They have an incredible, incredible amount of song selection. Anything you want. They got Thank You Hashem. They got Mordechai Shapiro. They really got it all. You can subscribe monthly for just $4.99 a month, yearly for $49.99. And we have a special deal here for you. For any of our listeners, if you use the code Jews next door, D-O-R, you get an additional 10% off. And if you don't want your children to be using a device with internet, J Karaoke has got you covered. You can download the app onto your desktop. Once you have it up, turn off the internet, let them sing all day long without the internet. Check out J Karaoke today and let the fun begin. Going back to what you said before, like in the, the first suggestion of, you know, tell them like to pretend at the time. So I, I understand within bullying how that could be like a very good, you know, but what type of message does that, I guess, does that sense to the child of like, pretend that sometimes that you're one way and like you're a different way. Like, how does that, I mean, how do you, so how do you I, not let that I become? Think, I think that it's so interesting because parents have asked me that before. Don't we do that all the time? Why with what? 
with everything. When you go to shul, whether you feel like davening or not, mm-hmm. okay. don't you uh-huh. pretend I'm point. gonna have the kavana. I really wanna schmooze with this guy over there. Hopefully you're not going to, but <laughs> I'm going to pretend that my intent right now is to talk to God and that's what I'm going to do. When you're talking to your boss, you might be angry and upset on the inside right. about something that happened, but what are you gonna present on the outside? Part of it is an issue of personal safety, of thinking about what is, and when you're riding the New York City subways, you aren't schmoozing with every person and telling them you're, oh, by the way, I'm carrying hundreds of dollars in my pocketbook right now. Right, right. You are <laughs> going to only share what's safe to share. Sure. It's part of when you're with your friends, when you're with your family, then you let your proverbial hair down right. and you can be your total self. Although, again, even there, we restrain from saying things restrain ourselves and refrain from saying things that are unproductive and that right. would be hurtful right, and, right. or would be misunderstood and would come back to hurt me in some way. Sure. So I think if it's framed in that way, that this is the way we stay safe in the world. Yeah. We do not show everybody, we don't show strangers yeah. the no, same great, great, part of ourselves point. that we show the people who we know yeah. will protect us. It's a great point. It's a really, really great point. Now, in terms of like a parent, but the parent's role, you know, when, when a parent sees that their child is being bullied, Right. I mean, we're already at the stage where it's, we know it is happening. Um, so, you know, once, once we've seen it happen and they, they we've seen that it's, it's already hurt them, you know, their, their confidence is blown. They don't want to go to school. What, what at that point can a parent do to, you know, reinstate their confidence or help them get back to school or they don't want to go to youth groups in shul or whatever it is, you know, how do we, how do we help them get over I, that? I, I think it's, it's such a, it's a great question and it's, you know, a parent's job to constantly be growing and building your child. Um, and one of the most important things is validation and to eliminate any sense of guilt or responsibility. Mm-hmm. A victim is never responsible for their victimization. Not in the case of sexual victimization, not in the case of child abuse, and not in the case of bullying. There is nothing, I say this all the time to victims, there's nothing you did that makes it okay that you were treated this way. Right, right. Even the fact that, you know, your social skills may not be perfect. That doesn't mean you should be called loser. It's never okay to call someone loser. It's not all right what the other person did. Here's the problem. The only person I have in front of me is the victim as a parent. That's the only person I can work with. So on the one hand, I have to communicate the message. Nothing you did is causes you to deserve this kind of treatment. On the other hand, we have to look at what you did. Right. If every single day someone is grabbing your homework and ripping it up, we have to look at where what could we do differently about where you keep your homework mm-hmm. to keep you protected. Not because you made a mistake, but right. because there's because someone there's in the someone class right. who's doing something absolutely horrible. They're not my child and I can't control them. So let's see if we can't change what we do and maybe that will make a difference. Right. But validating you did nothing wrong taking away any sense of guilt and saying, and I'm going to, we're going to work through this. We're right. going to get through this and together. How do, you, how do you get them to like be okay with going back to. So part of it is, it is, <laughs> is doing due diligence about protection. Right. And I always say, inform the school, don't storm the school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't call up and say, I want that other child hung from his toenails <laughs> and suspended. And I want him thrown out of the school. Right. Parents have to realize, by the way, that the only requests you can make of the school are how they handle your child. You cannot ask about how they're handling anybody else's child, nor can you demand that anybody else's child be handled in a particular way. Right. So you can call and say, I'd love, you know, I'd like to know, is it possible that the teacher take the homework from my son or daughter Mm. when she first comes into the room? Because here's what's been happening. And I'd like to figure out one of my favorite stories of my children growing up about the power of a parent and a teacher sharing information and a teacher's brilliance. Sixth grade boys were playing in the local park, a pickup game Friday afternoons. I did not know about it until my son came home one Friday afternoon and said, can I go to the park Friday afternoon and play ball? Uh, yeah, sure. I said, are you, are you going with, I'm going to make up a name. Are you going with Brian? Brian is his regular Friday afternoon play date every Friday afternoon. They're right. together. He says, no, Brian can't come. And I start a litany of questions to find out why can't Brian come. And I finally hear they won't let. If Brian comes, I can't show up. Mm. And I said, this is a public park. This isn't someone's backyard. I call my husband to make sure I'm not missing some guy thing. And I say, <laughs> um, you know, honey, we don't, we don't do that. 
we don't ditch one person to go with another, even though this, my son was a great ball player and really wanted to play this game. And we knew that he would, pro- I said, either you bring Brian or you don't go. We knew he would opt not to go and he did. And he played with Brian that day out of my concern for how he would be treated on Monday mm, when he went mm. to school. I called his sixth grade Rebbe who is not in the neighborhood, who's nowhere near any place when this happens. And I just informed him of what's going on. I said, I don't want you to do anything. There's nothing you can do. Just so you know. It's happening just so you know, in case the boys are treating him roughly Mm -hmm. this morning, just if you could be aware. My son comes home the following Thursday. Ima, Ima, Revy put up a sign in the lunchroom. Come one, come all Friday in the park. Sign up below no way. every huh. Monday for the remainder of the school year. This amazing educator asked the boys, how was the game? Did you pitch? Wait a minute, guys. It was his turn to pitch this week. Huh. He managed, managed the social dynamic of that class, wow. turned it all around and gave such a powerful message. Not on my watch. Hmm. You will not act this way to one of our, to our right, classmates. Right. Wow. 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 That came about because I picked up the phone. Had I not picked up the phone, the Rebbe would right. never have known. And you were literally, even, you weren't even asking to do anything. I wasn't just, asking wow. for anything. I wasn't wow, asking wow, for wow. anything. So, so parents, if, if your child is being victimized, you need to talk to the school because they may not know that it's happening. They may not see it. Put your heads together, but be reasonable. Don't demand. Think together about how, how might we fix this? And Educators are very different. You know, I might have spoken to three other rabbis who would have done nothing. Right, right. This rabbi got it and owned it and did something about it. Had he not, I might have gone to other people in the right, school. Right. I might have talked with other people to ask, is there any ideas? What could we do about this? How, so, do, you, how do you, in that type of situation, let's say, I mean, you, you were doing it because you were nervous that maybe he would then get bullied. But how do you, when you go to the school... Or when you have your child, let's say, go to tell someone in the school, how do you avoid them being bullied as a result of that? Of yeah. being like the, you know, the stitches so, get stitches so I think type you of concept. Have to, you, know? you have to be very, very clear with the school what you want known and not known. And sometimes you, you know, the, the, for schools, for educators, and sometimes for parents, the most obvious thing to do in the case of bullying is often the absolute wrong thing to do. You know, a parent going to the parent oh, of the yeah. bully no, no, no. <laughs> and saying, did you, you know what your son did to my son or your daughter did to my daughter? Not a good, a, not a good plan. Going to the bully themselves, an adult yeah, going no, to the no, bully no, no. And, and, and talking to the, somebody else's child. Not a good idea. And schools making announcement over the loudspeaker. Would everyone please be nice to Nona Novik? <laughs> we hear you're not being nice. And people, if you're not nice, you're going to lose recess. Right. For the remainder of the semester, that is not going to make Rona's life any better. Right. It's going to make it much worse. So very often you have to be strategic and careful and say, I'm telling you this school, but I do not want anybody to know right. no that I told you this. Right. I don't want announcements made. I don't want public. This is, this is between us. Um, and, and I would talk I would hope with, that people would have a little more tact than that, but, uh, but I guess I you never so, know. But right. sometimes they, they really, it's, it's out of the right place. They really think they're right. being helpful and right. they haven't thought through. Right, right. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about one high school I heard about where a Rebbe has a practice of walking in the hallway when he sees one of the boys who is not doing so well. He goes and he puts his arm and he schmoozes with that boy. But the rest of the school identifies <laughs> you now right. as one of the Rebbe's losers. Uh, right, right. So again, the Rebbe is totally well-intentioned. He doesn't mean to hurt anybody through this. It's just, um, it's just having the wrong impact. So, so parents and schools both have to think about that. And I rarely, I rarely say directly confront. Um, there are also ways to tell without telling. In other words, there are ways to say, I don't know if you're aware, but there's something going on at recess on Friday afternoons. Right, right. You may want to have extra staff there. And that's not saying no names have been, right, right. you know, mentioned, sure. et cetera. Yeah, totally. Now, let's say, you know, once we know, the parents know that their child is being bullied. So I guess two things. Number one is how does the parent address the child themselves? And then also, you know, well, let's, say, let's say a type of situation where the child doesn't know they're being bullied. You know, and the, the, the parents see it, but the child like just doesn't, like you said, so sometimes let me they deal, don't have the let social... So let me deal with that one separately. Um, 
there are times where, and again, I don't know that I would call it bullying as much as parents will sometimes see that a friend is taking advantage or that there's an imbalance in the friendship. You know, you you share more than they do. You give more than they do. You call, they never call you back. And a parent may see that. Parents have to be careful of the forbidden fruit paradigm. Mm-hmm. The minute a parent says, I don't want you to get <laughs> together with your ear anymore. Right. Now it's like, whoa, he's really cool. I want to see him all the time. <laughs> there must be something good. So there, there must be something. One, one strategy of parenting that I'd like to suggest, um, and I suggest this as, as an author of now two children's I books, yeah. um, is read books. Read books. Your child librarian, your children's librarian in your local library is a great resource. If you say, give me books that have friendship dilemmas in them for a three-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, what could we read together in a book club or a read aloud? The reason books are so helpful is children are totally non-defensive. You're talking about the characters in The Cat in the Hat. You're talking about Curious George. There's no reason for me not to give my honest feelings about what's going on in this dynamic. If I'm reading Frog and Toad are friends, then and, and Frog does something nasty to Toad, then I can say how Toad felt, how Frog felt, how I would feel if I was Frog or Toad. Me- meaning go out of the book itself and like kind of like talk it out. Talk with it child. out. Right. Talk it out and say, what do you think is going? Do you, any of your friends ever act the way Frog just did? Right. What would you do hmm. if your friend did? And what, obviously, if you have teenagers, don't read Frog and Toad. <laughs> if you have teenagers, watch the TV or the movies that they're watching. Right. Every movie made for teenagers, every book written for teenagers, sure. every TV show deals with social dynamics. Talk about whose social dynamics are upsetting. Does anybody ever act that way among your friends? Who does? What would you do if that were the case, et cetera, et cetera. And I would even say, find quiet moments around the Shabbat table. Driving in the car is a great place to have conversations where you say, is there anything a friend of yours could do that would mean you couldn't be their friend anymore. Hmm. Like, what's the odd con? What's the limits? What's the up to which point would I have Such to break off to them with that. a friend wow. to really? Ma- and then, then the question after that is, and how would you do it? Right. What would actually be the words in your mouth to hmm. say if you're going to get in that car after you've been drinking? I, I can't go with you, and I'm calling the cops. Right. Give me the keys. You can't get in that car. Like. If you don't rehearse these, they're called peer refusal skills. If you don't rehearse them, when the time comes, your child is deer in the headlights and they don't know what to do and what to say. And it's really important that we give our children these tools before they need them. Right, right. Hmm. Is, is Is it something that the parents done, let's say, that's leading to that? Is it a character trait? Yes and no. So again, it's pretty rare that you have a shy and anxious child become a bully. It's pretty, it's pretty rare that you have an aggressive, impulsive, bossy child become a victim. And children are born with these temperamental styles. However, parents of bossy children either celebrate their bossiness. Yeah, how many people did you step on to get to the top? That's what we believe in our family. That's our proverbial bumper sticker. We made it to the top by squishing the little guy. Um, Or parents of bossy children say, we don't act that way. Those are not the me do- those are not the values of our family. Right. We treat everybody nicely. That's part of what our you know, of our tradition says. So how parents deal with sibling issues, with p- issues on play dates, with the way and here's the other thing. It's not just how you deal with your child's behavior. What if when you go to order your meal at the restaurant with your family dinner, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you bully the waiter. You malign them. You send food back that's perfectly fine. You scream at the educators who are dealing with your children. You talk nasty about everybody in the family, in the community. I've even seen families who say in front of their children, oh, we were going to go to someone's house for Shabbos, but we got a better invite, Mm -hmm. so we ditched them. Right. And what, okay. are you, what are you teaching to your what children? What are you teaching <laughs> right. to your children? How can you expect those children not to act in the same way? Because we've sent the message that that gets a green light in our family and that that's acceptable behavior and that will be celebrated. Right, right. So 
parents do contribute, but temperament plays a very large role. And parents aren't the only teachers. Heaven knows we live in a, a toxic swamp of culture that is not celebrating niceness currently. Yeah. That is not... Um, Especially on social credit. media. Correct. It's, like it's crazy. That, but, but just look at the way politicians act, the way celebrities act, the way people of power act. It's not with niceness. Yeah. It's not yeah. with diplomacy and kindness. And that's what is being seen. Every once in a while, we get those wonderful news stories. You know, the man who jumped on the subway tracks left his own kids with someone else to right. save someone. And we see those moments of shining humanity. But unfortunately, they're like, well, you know, news, news in general that, that's, is, less, that's, is usually the negative things correct, that are going on in the world. Correct. And that's they're the crises and the traumas and the negatives. Right, right. So uh, would you say there's any like specific, let's say, character traits of parents that sometimes can lead to that or? Well, I think that. But you're saying it's not, it's a temperament. The, so. This this notion of my child above all, mm -hmm. a lack of empathy for others. Right. The, the other group that we have to talk about at some point this morning is bystanders, mm -hmm. not just bullies and victims, but right. bystanders. Yeah, we'll definitely um, get there. <laughs> but parental attitudes that kind of say, keep out of it. Don't engage. It's only about you. And it's, you know, us, us, us all the time. Me, me, me. Uh, that is hugely problematic. Parents who use aggression to get what they want right. are problematic and who tolerate aggression in their children um, is problematic. Right, right, right. And what if... Um what if, you know, we say it's not, it's not at all the parent, right? Meaning it's, it's clearly not the parent. The parents right. like, sometimes oh. it's a temperament and parents are, are extremely distressed that their child is acting in this way. Then it's like any other behavior that we want to change. Yeah. Then we communicate with love and care that this is not acceptable behavior. We think about, I, I think about a behavioral economy. The behavioral economy means what do I get for engaging in this behavior what do I get for not engaging in this behavior? What do I lose if I engage in this behavior? What do I lose if I don't? Face it, I'm in the sandbox. I want to grab that pail and shovel. Right. I like the pail and shovel. I get to use it right away. If I don't engage in that and my parents are not celebrating my sharing and my niceness, then I've lost the shovel and I've got nothing. Right, right. Parents need to ramp up the benefits of being a nice, kind-hearted person and they may have to add some costs to acting what like a bully. What would you say is the appropriate, both celebration if, uh, well, and... I, well, I, I like to use the word safe. Mm -hmm. You are not being safe with those children. Mm -hmm. You weren't safe at school. You can't participate in a class trip. You know, if you are not going to use safe words, safe behavior, safe socialization, then you can't be part of the group and you're going to lose out on opportunities. Right. Then you can't come with us to American Dream Mall or you can't go... Um, you know, bowling today because of the way that you spoke to people in the family or right. your friend. Right, right, right. So I'm curious, you know, let's just take like a, a scenario. Let's say a child is being pressured to do something. Is that considered bullying? I mean, uh, they don't want to do it. They it don't it may do or it. may not be. It's it's peer pressure. Yeah. It You know, um, on the college campus, hazing is an example yeah. of, of that. And hazing has been related to the same dynamics of bullying. It is kind of like a, a bullying situation. Yeah. And bullies will sometimes look to humiliate a victim and pressure them into doing something that will be embarrassing right. or to do something that will get them in trouble. Right, right. Again, I think we need to give our children the peer refusal skills. We need to tell them that it is okay to build in delay to say, uh, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll think about, I'll, I'll, I'll be back in a minute, right. you know, and then go find an adult mm -hmm. and find the adults. You can tell something to in confidence, find the adults you can ask for help. You know, when, when I was running bully prevention programs in schools, we taught seven strategies. We said, why do we need seven strategies? Because sometimes confrontation doesn't feel safe. Right. So I need to use distraction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes distraction doesn't feel safe. So I need to enlist help. Right. Sometimes there's no help around. So I, I need to support the victim. I, I need some options here. Right. Right. Um, so I, I think we have to give our our children a lot of options for all the situations they're going to find themselves in. Totally. So you mentioned before that we haven't even spoken yet about bystanders, right? So my child witnessed bullying. What's, so first things first is, you know, 
we spoke a little bit about this before, you know, sh- should I be guiding them to go to school leadership? How should I guide them to go to school leadership? Meaning we obviously, we don't want them to then get bullied. So we spoke about that a little bit. I would bit, say before, before you say, tell someone, yeah, are we raising our children on the paradigm that I'm responsible for my fellow man? Mm. Or are we raising them, put on your blinders, do what's good for Rona and don't see anything around you. Right, right. We have to decide as parents in a very, again, in a noxious world with a lot of danger. Yeah. What should our children feel is their responsibility? And and schools also, by the way, have to think about this because we're sending messages inadvertently all the time. I'll give you a wonderful example, a school by necessity. It was color war. Mm-hmm. The principal did not have enough money to buy everyone a trophy. Right. Only the winning team was getting a trophy. She felt kind of bad because everyone put a huge amount of effort into color war. And in fact, she was really impressed with all of her students. She came up with an amazing idea. She filled every trophy with her. She kisses. And she said, everyone on uh, the winning team's hmm. obligation is to find someone who does not have a trophy and give out the kisses. Love that. Oh, that's amazing. That took, I'm the top, I'm the winner and made giving part of being win part of winning. Right. Winning and mm. giving were now equated. What a powerful, potent lesson. Yeah, yeah. Caring for other people is the top prize. Yeah. That gets me the trophy. That's what my trophy is filled with, with caring. So we have to think as parents, how are we providing those opportunities? Mm. How are we teaching those lessons? Are we, when our kids come off the bus saying, who'd you help at school today? Mm. Who do you, I, I gave you extra snack. Did you share with someone? Mm, mm. Did Who liked your, who liked Love your that. Doritos? Yeah. You know, um, we have to, and if there was someone who needed help, who helped them? You did great. That's great. Now, when a child witnesses bullying, here's the problem. If you ask children below third grade, what should I do? You're in the hallway and you hear Moshe call Sam a name. What should you do? Right. Below third grade, they'll give you two answers. Do you want to guess what they are? I'd say either they're going to say, run and tell someone. Yeah. Or try to stop them. Yep. Those are the two answers. Below third grade, tell Moshe to stop or go tell a grown up. Right. Above third grade, if I ask that question, hmm. I'm down to one. Right. And it's not tell someone. Yeah. <laughs> because that's tattling right. and that's no, absolutely verboten. It, yeah. No. Yeah. First of all, I have to say, say I have school, to say to- an op. I have to, um, (laughs) I have to say to, to kids all the time, if, if someone on the playground was climbing a fence that is not permitted, you're not allowed to climb the fence. They fell off. They're now, their arm is twisted and there's blood coming out of their nose. What are you going to do? We're we're going to get help. 911, Hatsala, we're calling for help. Get a grown up. Every age, no matter what, high school, they're calling for help. Yeah, but it's obvious he fell off the fence and he wasn't supposed to, he's going to get in trouble doesn't matter. It's saving a life. It's a priority. It's a priority. We have to save a life. I said, but sometimes people are injured in ways we can't see. Sometimes an Mm. injury to someone's soul, to someone's feelings is so powerful that it could cost their life. We have to intervene. We have to do something. You see someone who's being called a name, but I have to give you strategies. I have to give you distraction. You don't have to tell Moshe to stop. You can say, hey, Moshe, did you see that? Are you watching the game this Sunday? Who's playing? Who are you rooting for? Now he's stopping. He's not bothering Sam anymore. You pulled his attention right away. Or even if you can't stop in that moment, later that day, call Sam. Say, did you get number five on the math problems? Now you've communicated to Sam, "You're you're a person. You have value. You're not a nothing. Mm -hmm. We have to think bystanders are sending a message through their action. Green light, red light. We have to think, how do I send the red light? I can do it subtly. I can, I can say, stop, you know, don't do that. I will tell you, I'm a bully prevention expert. I don't think I've ever done that ever in my life. I use distraction. Mm -hmm. I support the victim. I enlist help. I find something else I can do. I'm five feet tall. I'm not, who am I going to stop? You know, I, 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 confrontation isn't my style. So uh, we have to give strategies, but we have to give them the impetus and the desire to engage. Also, by the way, bystanders don't have to do it alone. Imagine if three guys go up to Sam and Moshe in the hallway. 
now it's already, it's a, it's a party. It's not one person saying, cut it out. Right. It's three guys mm-hmm. and it's totally different. Yeah, yeah. If, if one person says, don't let Rona sit with you and the other three people at the table say, oh no, no, Rona, come on, there's room here. Right, right. It's totally it's different. different. It's not one person sure. I'm being targeted. We do have to let our children know when parents encourage them, engage, get involved, that bullies won't take it lying down. No bully is ever going to say, thank you so much Shania, right. for telling me <laughs> that I was not exhibiting my good moral character and I should be different. Right, right. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. What they're going to get is you're going to get targeted for a moment, right? but you're not going to be targeted long term because right. you're the opposite of what a bully looks for. Right. If you're standing up, clearly, a bully is not, not looking go for that. Right. They, in the moment, they're going to have to save face and they're going to, who made you the boss of it? You know, ah, you loser. But that's not going to last. Right, You're right. not going to get targeted long term. And these these skills that we're talking about is this like a conversation that a parent has with a child, like kind of like out of the blue, like what, where do like kind of where does that again? I, I think some of it. I mean, I, I I talk when I'm running you know parenting workshops about valuing living and teaching. Really, our three part, our our, our three legged, our three braided cord of how we raise good children. First, we communicate what we value, that this is important to us. Caring for people is important to us. But then I can't just give lip service. I have to live it. Right. Uh, they have to see me do Bikr Cholim and be Menachem, uh, go to you know mourners' houses and invite the people over who are not just the popular people in the neighborhood right. and accept invitations and go happily to the wedding of someone and not you know, complain, oh, another wedding, another right. Sunday at a wedding. Makes me crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, the, we have to live our values and then we have to directly teach them. We right. have to say, I'm going to show you how to handle this situation. I'm, we're going to read a book about it. We're going to practice. I, I tell the story in the TED talk that I did years ago, the Eli talk that right. I did years right. ago, that my my father-in-law, Lev Shalom, taught his four sons how to shake hands. Really? Because he believed that a handshake communicates something about your connection to another human being. Hmm. And if you don't do it right, you're not making that connection. Wow. They had a handshake lessons. Love that. No, too weak. Too, you're not right. making eye contact right. while right. you shake my hand. Come on. Shake my hand no, like you great. mean it. That's awesome. That's, you know, directly teaching a life skill. Wow. Hmm. Fascinating. 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 Is there, would you say there's anything that within this topic that parents wouldn't even think to ask about? They wouldn't even like, know, like, oh, that's like, so not on my radar that, uh, maybe that we haven't discussed. I think we've covered a lot. I mean, the, the, the long-term outcomes for bullies and victims are not great. Most of the studies are done on persistent, you know, kids who are not victimized once or twice, but persistently. Sure. I will tell you that when I give talks on bully prevention, invariably adults come up to me at the end and tell me their own battle stories right. and their scars that they've carried with them for years. So the more we can do to eliminate or decrease this problem, oh, this is what parents should know. And it's devastating. It's really a devastating fact, but I have to say it because yeah. parents are going to hear this. And they're, they're going to run to their schools and they're going to demand, call Novik, and we need a bully prevention program. The best bully prevention programs out there are accomplishing only about a 25% reduction in bullying. Oh, boy. And those are university-run, research-driven, multi-million oh. dollar, multi-year so what, what? interventions. <laughs> this is a, a, a human problem that we don't yet have the vaccine for. Wow. We are going to be living with it. Well, parents need to probably take a little bit more of an active role with it. That, parents I mean, need to. Schools need to. We really need to look at our communities. And 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 in some ways, we may be, you know, I don't want to say we're fighting against human nature, but we are human beings. We struggle with jealousy and we struggle with, with anger and with competition and with wanting to be top dog and all of that. I, I remember the first year that I was doing bully prevention in schools, that a sixth grade girl at the end of a series of workshops gave me feedback that I will never forget. She said, I went home and I told my mother, I can't listen to her anymore. (laughs) And I'm saying, oh my gosh, I'm never going to work again. That's it. There goes my career. She said, because my mother always told me when you see trouble, walk away from trouble. Mm. But I realized after these workshops, if my friend is in trouble and I walk away, what kind of friend am I? Wow. And I get goosebumps still. Wow. Because she went on to say, 
And if I see a human being in trouble and I walk away, what kind of human being am I? Wow. Hmm. This, is this, this is the opportunity and obligation we have as parents right. is to raise the next generation of mensches, of human beings that care about other human beings and that will not walk away when someone is suffering. Uh, amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much. This is uh, incredible. You have so much wisdom. It's, it's, it's so obvious. It's so clear. So many incredible points throughout this episode. And uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd say my pleasure, but I can't wait to be obsolete. I hear you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode with Dr. Novik about bullying. I hope you gained as much as I did. I really loved how Dr. Novik gave such a clear definition of what bullying is. And I, there are certain things that I, I guess I thought bullying was and, you know, definitely have it much more clear now. And also really loved and appreciated the the cues to be able to to be able to pick up on when maybe a child is bullying and what the type of conversation to have. Dr. Novik clearly has such an incredible expertise in this area and uh, it was really such a pleasure talking with her about this. I hope you enjoyed and I'd love to hear your feedback. Please, you know, visit us at genalf.org, follow us on Instagram at Parenting the Jews Next Door, on Twitter at Yayur Manchel, and, you know, reach out to us. We'd love, love to hear your feedback. And I hope you will join us back for, for next week's episode on technology with Dr. Ellie Shapiro, who is, he's the go-to. He's the go-to in this topic of child safety within with regards to technology, what we should be aware of, what things we can do to, you know, put good guidelines into place for our children to be safe on, on internet, on technology, different devices. So without further ado, have an amazing week and looking forward to seeing you back here next week for another incredible episode. Let's parent the Jews next door together. <laughs>